What's up guys, Comics Kid 2099 here, and I have a graphic novel that I want to talk to you about. The Marvels Project. This is an eight-issue miniseries written by Ed Brubaker and drawn by Steve Epting. Uh, I want to go ahead and talk about the art right now because I usually forget to talk about the art when I do these reviews. Uh, the art is fantastic. Uh, I really love the art here. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of Alex Ross's work, uh, specifically from Marvels. Uh, it's not as photorealistic as Ross's work, but especially whenever we see the Golden Age Human Torch, uh, I'm reminded of Ross's work. It's very gorgeous. It almost has that uh, painted style. I'm not sure if these pages actually are painted or if they're just uh, done to look that way, kind of made to look a little bit more classic and retro, uh, but it's really gorgeous work uh, through and through. Uh, the art is very consistently good throughout this entire miniseries. I really love the art. That's probably my favorite thing about the book. And you might be saying, ooh, what does that say about the story? Unfortunately, it doesn't say a lot about the story. Uh, I don't know what I was expecting when I got this book, but I don't think that I got it by the time I was done with it. Uh, bear in mind, I used to be a lot more interested in uh, the behind-the-scenes stuff in the Marvel and DC universe. Like if you have, you know, the golden age of Marvel Comics where all these golden age superheroes showed up and then many decades later you do a behind the scenes story that tells what was happening in between those stories. I used to be a lot more interested in those kinds of stories and this kind of story could have been good, I think. Uh, basically the plot is uh, you've got the beginning of the Golden Age of Marvel Comics. That's really the plot here. It's not a very uh, complex story. Uh, you've got all these characters uh, slowly showing up, and they're fighting uh, the bad guys, who are uh, Nazis and, uh, spoiler, this is a, really the only spoiler that'll probably surprise you, but the Nazis are working with uh, a group of Atlanteans who are rebelling against Namor. And uh, basically, uh, this whole story is taking bits and pieces of the Marvel Universe that have existed for several decades and is trying to tie them together into one cohesive story. And I don't think it necessarily succeeds at that. Uh, now, to compare this to something that I do think succeeds at that, uh, DC The New Frontier. Now, admittedly, it has been several years since I read DC The New Frontier, but I like to think that that story did the same thing here, uh, but it actually succeeded. Uh, it was set in the 1950s and not the 1940s, but it basically was taking all of these events and uh, the first appearances of all of these characters and it was working them into a very cohesive story and it worked. I felt like there actually was a cohesive story and it wasn't so much just a series of events that didn't really feel connected. Um, this story feels a lot more like a series of events that don't feel connected, but it's trying to connect all of these events. Uh, for example, um, there's a few things in this book that I do like, uh, little connections that uh, Brubaker makes that I think are very clever. For example, uh, Nick Fury and a friend of his, before they officially join the army, uh, they are, I guess, freelance soldiers, uh, which means they are in Europe and they're fighting Nazis, but they're not officially part of the army. I don't even know how that works. I don't think that that's something that they did ever in the real world, so I don't really understand how that works. But uh, Fury and his buddy, they are over there in Europe fighting Nazis, and this other soldier, he enlists them to help them rescue uh, Professor Erskine, who is the uh, guy who was in charge of the... Uh, super soldier program, the scientist who created the super soldier program that created Captain America. And uh, this soldier says, you know, we officially, the army cannot be involved in rescuing him, but you guys, you're not officially part of the army, so you can rescue him and bring him over to us. And uh, that was an interesting idea. I thought that kind of worked. But then a lot of these connections, I didn't really think worked. It really just felt like, okay, and now we're at this point in the Marvel Universe where the Submariner attacked New York City with a tidal wave, and we're going to bring that uh, up at this point in the story. And a lot of this book just feels like, okay, here's something that happened in the Marvel Universe, and then here's something that happened. And at no point do I ever get the feeling that all of these events are actually connected. Uh, it tries. The book tries very hard to make all these things connected. Uh, you've got the Golden Age Angel, uh, not to be confused with uh, the X-Men character, the Angel, but a different character who is kind of, sort of, if the Shadow didn't have any superpowers and dressed in brightly colored costume. That's basically what the angel is. Uh, he appeared, I've actually known about him for a while. I have uh, two books on my bookshelf back there that's uh, The Golden Age of Marvel Comics Volumes 1 and 2. 
and he appeared in one of those books. Uh, and I've always thought that he would be a kind of neat character to do like a mini series on. And Ed Brubaker kind of sort of does that because the angel is the one who is uh, narrating this whole thing. The problem is the angel was never really a major part of the Marvel Universe. So you've got this guy who 90% of the readership has never heard of, and then he's narrating events that he had no connection to, like that time that uh, the Human Torch and the Submariner fought. And then he, a lot of times in this book, you're hearing this phrase, years later, Captain America told me this, and now I'm telling it to you in my narration. And it's like, Captain America didn't tell you that. Nobody's even heard of this character, and Captain America probably never even met you. Um... It feels really weird that this character is the one narrating everything, especially since 80% of what happens here, he's not even involved with. It's mostly just him saying, and then later I found out that this happened, and now I'm writing it down in my story. And he's barely involved with any of the main aspects of the story. He's really just kind of an observer telling this story. Uh, he's involved in a few things, but at no point do I ever get the sense that he's actually a big a big thing in his own story. He's mostly just on the side. And uh, I don't really know what the best way to have made this story work would have been. Uh, like I say, it's been several years since I read DC The New Frontier, but I don't really know how to have made this story work. Uh, it just doesn't work for me. And maybe I'm alone. I don't know what anyone else thought of this story because I remember when this came out, I was going to my comic book shop every week when it came out, I don't remember what anyone thought of it. I don't remember hearing any praise or uh, the other thing uh, where people don't like it. Uh, my brain is all over the place today. I don't remember hearing any good or bad on this book. I just remember it coming out and then that was that. Uh, I don't really remember seeing a lot of reaction to it. And for all I know, everyone loved it. But for me, it didn't really work. Uh, it mostly, my big problem with it is that it just feels like a series of events that really aren't connected. And there are a few connections that I do like. Like I said, uh, Nick Fury rescuing Professor Erskine or uh, the Destroyer, uh, how it reveals that he got his superpowers because he's a character from the 1940s who is kind of sort of also a super soldier. And ever since I found out about him, which was a very long time ago, uh, I always wondered, okay, if he has super soldier powers, why is it that the Marvel Universe isn't able to replicate the super soldier process since uh, he's got super soldier powers and so does Captain America. All these characters have the super soldier powers. This book answers that question. It answers how the Destroyer got his super soldier powers and how this process is still not able to be replicated. And then uh, there's also this connection between the Two-Gun Kid and uh, the Angel. And the Two-Gun Kid is a Western character from Marvel who I know very little about. Apparently uh, he has spent quite a bit of time in the present day in the Marvel Universe via time travel and so uh he is kind of like the uh, wesley dodd of the kingdom uh, uh, the kingdom come story uh not the kingdom that's the sequel uh but in the kingdom come story wesley dodd is an octogenarian uh, retired superhero and he's telling all these stories to his preacher uh norman and then when he dies uh then he's kind of passing the torch of the story on to norman uh in the same way uh you've got the two-gun kid uh, and this is set in the very late 30s, so the Two-Gun Kid would have been uh, an adventurer in the 1880s, and now he's an old man in this uh, nursing home, and his doctor is the guy who eventually becomes the angel. And I kind of like that connection, that uh, the Two-Gun Kid passes his mask on to this guy who becomes the angel, and the angel's mask is the Two-Gun Kid's mask. I kind of like that, but by and large, this book didn't work for me. It mostly was just an eight-issue miniseries of unconnected events with a few diamonds in the rough here and there. Uh, it's not bad. It's not like unreadable or anything like that. It's just not a cohesive story. And it's not something that I would recommend to anyone, not because it would turn them off of comics, but because it wouldn't necessarily give them a reason to keep reading comics. And that's for uh, people who don't read comics, but people who do read comics, they would probably just feel like this is a waste of time. They probably would feel like they've read better stories like this elsewhere. They would say, well, this is kind of like DC The New Frontier, but at least in my opinion, DC The New Frontier is better. Or they might say, well, this is a little bit similar to Kingdom Come, but Kingdom Come is a lot better. And again, maybe I'm just making that connection because I think that Steve Epting's work is very similar to Alex Ross's, but I do think the beginning of the story with the two-gun kid passing the torch onto the angel, I do think that's very similar to the beginning of Kingdom Come. Uh, but I think this story 
it's not bad. It's just not something that I would recommend anyone read. Uh, so those are my thoughts on the Marvels Project. I hope that you guys liked this review. And if you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will be back later in the week with some other kinds of videos. So I'll see you guys then. Have a great rest of the day.